This unique moonlight white tea is not only delicious when brewed, but the dry leaf is also visually stunning. The fuzz is a glistening bright white and the leaves are nearly monochrome, white on one side and black on the other. Grown in Guangdong province, the Siu Guanbai is made from old bushes from the De Qing area, using a Bai Mudan plucking standard and finished using the Yu Guanbai process, which is more typically used on a Yunnan white tea produced in the Jinggu area. Aside from the beautiful appearance of the dry leaf, it also teases the nose with a nutty, creamy aroma, almost reminiscent of vanilla. The tea broth is thick and full-bodied, and while the tea is sweet throughout the experience, there is a hint of umami that underpins the whole session, giving it depth. Take your time between sips to taste the evolution of the Huigan. This tea is a stunner. Hello everybody, welcome back okay. to Sunday Tea Book. It's weird we said hello to Instagram, now we're saying hello to uh, you guys on YouTube. Hello Lolo, hello Jubaijia, hello everybody out there in the world. Mm. All right, welcome to Sunday Tea Book episode 47. We have a great episode. Hey, time signature MMA, holy priests of the temple of Syrinx. Ooh, nice rush reference. I. Have I'm glad you mentioned that. I have to say, okay. the time signature shared, uh, time signature shared on our Discord channel. That if you're not part of, you can jump on to the link down below. Right there, we'd love to have you guys on Discord. Time signature shared the um, uh, help me out. Time signature, Tiger Pirates. Anyway, I love that whole album. I listened to the whole album. Amazing hair metalish sort of Broadway opera-esque hair metal, if you could imagine that. So uh, great uh, music reference to start with. We got a great episode lined up for you guys at Sunday Tea Book. Hello there, uh, Taohian74 on Instagram. Welcome to the live stream. Dominic Rang, welcome. Welcome yeah. to Sunday Tea Book episode 47. So we're gonna dive in. We got a great episode. We're going into dark tea today. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. What is Sunday Tea Book? For those of you that are new to Sunday Tea Book, this is where Jen and I sit down with you guys live right now and we uh, review books, papers, or articles that are packed with great information but are very hard to access or find in the West. Maybe the translation isn't great, maybe like this one it's okay, or maybe it's not even translated but we want to bring that, this information into the light. So that is what Sunday Tea Book is all about and 
We're into, we're well into our current document, which is T classification in theory and practice. That's oh. perfect. No, he said storm witch, tigers of the sea. Uh, tigers of the sea. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Not related to Sunday tea book, but I okay. recommend you check out that song. I got ideas on the Tigers, <laughs> like of, the tigers of the Ooh, Tea. That's a good Even one. better. I can't believe I didn't see the obvious mm. tea music makeover. Tigers of the Tea. <laughs> okay, anyway, sorry. Uh, so it's a uh, where was I? <laughs> tea classification in theory and practice. That is what we're getting into to mm. today. Yes, I got seriously distracted and totally lost my thought. Anyways, interrupted, actually. Uh, you, it wasn't you getting distracted. I just interrupted <laughs> straight up. Okay. Anyways, uh, it's, a, it's a paper talking about uh, six C types that we're very familiar with. Um, and it's by Professor uh, Chen Chuan who put forth this uh, whole theory. Uh, if you are just uh, into a quick learning of what are the difference between green tea, white tea, and black tea. Mm. We have videos uh, explaining that. Uh, in this uh, Sunday Tea Book series, we're diving into his paper where he explains uh, how he categorizes all the teas and based on process and what else is related to when yeah. it comes to tea uh, classification. So today we're going to talk about uh, dark tea, which in the paper he uh, it was a translated as uh, black tea, but it's about dark tea. And we will touch on a little bit of the process as well. Very and cool stuff. Different types of uh, dark teas. But before we dive into that, we want to know, and thank you Lolo and Jubai Jia, by the way, for sharing with each other what you're drinking. That's mm. what this is all about. Let us know what's in your cup. Um, what are you brewing today? Today, what are we brewing? We are having Look at some... this. Oh boy, this is a gorgeous tea. Da, da, da. Oh. So visually Try stunning. This one. Share it with the Instagram, Instagram folks. Instagram oh, and while you share the tea, all... <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Tea spill. It uh, happens. Yep. It happens. Well, you See, share the tea with, uh, with those folks. I will encourage the Instagram folks. Hey, Anana Daedalus. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. We are going to bring the document that Jen talked about, tea classification mm. in theory and practice. We're going to throw it up on the screen every now and then, talk about some of the little hiccups in it. Um, I'll take a minute and mention that this is an interesting document because... Uh, it's pretty deep for you tea ner nerds. Tea nerds, you will love this document. If you're not such a tea nerd and you don't feel like, like that there's maybe a bit too much detail, there are still great nuggets in here. Just some takeaways, some general things, which we always like to bring it up to that level. Um, this is a really interesting paper, but for those of you on Instagram, you're gonna wanna jump over to YouTube because that's where we have all this cool presentation and stuff. In fact, right now on the YouTube stream, there is a tea camera that shows the whole brewing setup and everything. So you definitely want to jump over there to, to enjoy this video because I'm going to say goodbye to Instagram. Oh, and we're, before I do say goodbye to you guys on Instagram, we also have tea trivia as we always do. So tea trivia is coming up. Then we're going to dive into our Sunday tea book. And uh, Instagram folks, we'll see you on the YouTube side. Bye bye. We didn't say, holy cow, it's 47. Episode 47. Oh, I'm going to. Do you feel to. like you missed that part? No, I'm going to say it. I just okay. want to save it for the YouTube. Oh, this here's a funny one. Look how weird I look. Put that up. <laughs> I don't know why it has to be the weirdest possible thumbnail for Instagram possible. Yes. So, guys, episode 47. Can you imagine 47 straight Sundays of Sunday Tea Book? We've evolved. It's almost a year. Huh? Yeah, it's been almost a year. And what I wanted to say about that is we always um, publish the teas that we're going to brew. I'm put, oh, it's not on camera. <laughs> not we, on. Always, we always publish it, about the teas that we're going to brew. So we're having Yu Guangbai, a beautiful white tea um, from Guangdong province today. But if you're interested to sip along with us, um, we do publish the teas that are coming up. You can grab them on our website. The link is down below to the Yu Guangbai. And from there, you can find all of these. We've got a great lineup coming up as we get to the end of tea classification in theory and practice. Next week, we've got an Iwu Gushu Shempuar 2003 guys that one i'm super excited i'm excited about the yu guanbai don't get me wrong but that's going to be a really nice one we got dian hong the week after that shui xian coming up after that a 2015 old tree shu puar one of my favorites we had it just last night it's one of our go-to evening teas 
and then a Bai Mudan top grade. So there's a whole tea order for you if you're interested. Links are down below. You can go and grab those. Sip along with us. Share us your tasting notes. Mm -hmm. And uh, woo, that's what's coming up. I'm so excited. And that actually where I ended is episode 52. So it will mark, so basically we should have a festival or something, like a celebration. Yeah, we're going to do something special. We're going to do that, something right? crazy. We Makes don't know sense. what. If you, hey, leave us a comment down below. What do you think we should do? Down below, down below, there, down <laughs> below. So you can see, because I was blocked by the tea cap. Right. What do you think would be a cool thing to do for a celebration? Let us mm. know. 42 plus five. Yeah. Oh, I get it. I get it. Meaning of life plus five. 42 is the meaning of life. You're cryptic sometimes, but I try to keep up. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. So those are the teas, the sip along teas coming up. Um, of course, tea trivia is coming up, but first I'm dying to try out these teas. Let's see what folks are drinking here. Jubai Ji has got a hey cha. Oh yeah, he said what he was, let me just see what you were. I'm gonna go and scroll back because you guys were right into the tea talk. Awesome. Oh, and Jubai Ji has skipped out on his uh, cycling despite the perfect weather. We've had some mm -hmm. great weather here today. I don't know, is there some garden stuff on Instagram lately? I'm not sure what's been. I'm a little out of touch. Not much, not much. Anyway, too I busy have, in the garden. Didn't have time right? to do I have to talk about meeting. the garden because we've had so much fresh veggie, and it's related to tea because it's related to flavor, texture, and just sort of that, um, that, that gustatory experience. It's been so nice to eat fresh produce lately. Mm. So already, so for those of you like Jubaijia, for example, who are down in the south, and it's not, it may not seem spectacular, but to be eating fresh veggies before june like most people they have a got a garden is, is today it's, it's like, is this week kind of big like a, a holiday in uh in the states in i don't think states. in the states it's victoria day for us up here yes the important a, thing is that this is the weekend for gardening for a spring uh summer i think it's more like summer yeah. we'll have some 30 degree or like hot this day. is the weekend where the frost risk the frost risk basically goes away. So mm. you're safe to kind of plant and your plants won't get killed by a bad luck evening, hopefully. And to be honest, it still happens sometimes. But uh, anyway, we've had a great gardening gardening year. Jubaijia is drinking. Uh, no, Lolo has an Ali Shan. I missed what. Oh, have a he's got a Duffo Longjing. Mm. Mm. And it looks like the, uh, who else has got? Black Dragon, oh, light orange. Oh, I see the uh, Lolo's uh, Ali Shan Jinchuan is getting to be light orange from a, uh, that's nice. Let us know how the tasting notes are on that. That must be divine. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Time no, Signature, no. loves dark teas. Looking forward to this episode. So am I. There's some really cool stuff in here. Mm -mm -mm. Sniffy. Mm. Oh, this is such a nice tea. I don't know if we showed the leaf, you showed the mm. leaf. I, Yu Guan Bai is so visually stunning as well. It has that, I think in the tasting notes on the website, I wrote about how it's almost monochrome. It's almost like a yeah. black and white black tea. And when you white, just yeah. look at it, it's almost like going back in time. It's, and it's so pretty. Mm. Oh, it has that white tea sort of honey floral sweetness. With a little bit of, a little bit of, a savory aroma too somehow. Savory. Oh. Really interesting. Hmm. Oh, I know what you mean. <laughs> Jubai G is teasing us with a comment like, "What's frost?" <laughs> <laughs> Florida, we, right? <laughs> yeah. Too, and too many mangoes to give away. Oh. Ayo, reminds me of Yunnan, right? You throw your mango pit on the ground, and in uh, two years you come back, there's a tree. Time signature. Oh. I'm just catching up on some comments. Oh, time signature is having a lemon balm herbal. I had some uh, old school English breakfast tea this morning. Oh, lovely. We also had a Keeman, Keeman traditional uh, this morning. Brewed Western oh, style we? in a pot. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> I had that. I didn't. Morning, she, my first morning tea or morning anything. I don't know what's going on. I need hours to really wake up. Right, she had just woken up, so. Mm. Tea abuse, those those loose leaves are too loose. Oh. Mm. Yeah, because I dropped that. So he just cleaned the uh, laptop and now it's covered in... Covered in tea fuzz. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mm. Mm. What do you think compare this one to usually the Taimu white tea? It's different. It's quite. It's actually quite different. I would think oh. Oh, by Mudan great, they will be really similar, but the... No, it's strikingly different. Uh -huh. Like the... So the... The Taimu teas have... Made by Shifu and Shitai. And uh, you can read about them in Cha Ren. I've got the uh, brew cam up that shows Cha Ren. So in Cha Ren magazine 2019, we... Um, we have, that was our visit where we went to Taimu. We visit right. with Shitai and Shifu. But their tea is exquisitely that they're, they're there is more creamy like just yes. to simplify but i feel like yeah, there's yeah. more you know i'm giving the long version <laughs> creamy it's creamy more creamy soy bean creamy mm. this one has more sweetness mm. lighter sweetness less of the mm. light sweetness mm -hmm. there's a soybean creamy but with a deep like a deep sweet floral too yeah that punctuates all of their tea whether it's by how yin jen all the way through to their shomei it all has that creamy you're right creamy sweet creamy floral they're That's really that. masters like their production mm. their production has grown read about it in cha ren but the per, it's grown so elegantly despite the growth the processing is still exquisite the, mm, oh, just check it out read it read it in there it has that hao xiang wei hao that tea the mm. fuzz the, the unique smell of it mm. Mm. Very nice tea. It's a really like a, a pretty cool day today, but sunny and cloudy. I felt like it really matches what I felt today. Time Signature has Chinese black tea on his bucket list. He has never tried it. Strong mm. recommend. Strongly really recommend try you try out the uh, Chinese green tea, uh, black tea <laughs> and green tea. Oh, but today we're going to be talking about dark tea. Mm -hmm. But before we talk about dark tea, we are going to have a little bit of fun, folks. Let's dive in. In a moment, I have my buttons to press. I got my buttons to press. There we go. You know what time it is, folks? It is tea trivia time. Let's do this. Yeah. All right, folks, it is tea trivia time. You know the drill. We're going to get started in 15 seconds. That's weird. It's never yeah. put us on both spots. Anyway, here you we are. It's the I don't background. know if it's going to... You might have to read the questions over us. I really hope not. I don't know what's going on with that. But uh, okay. They Let's have the out. update. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> I, oh, this is We're so here. weird. Here we are twice. Anyway, tea trivia time. Just take a guess. Have some fun. This first question is based on our most recent video which is uh, pig's feet are a great source of, is it one, collagen, two, mud, three, toenails, or four, caffeine and catechins? What are pig's feet a great source of? That's not bad, I kind of like that. I wish I had done that the whole time. That was supposed to work like that. Remember? Yeah, yeah, Because it, it didn't work. That's why so I made the little square, those. yeah. Then it somehow suddenly worked. Oh, it means your upgrade worked. It means like, it's actually normal. Yeah, yeah, possible. Possible. All right, guys, so just type in the number one through four, hit enter. I see some guesses rolling in for collagen. <laughs> Nobody says three. I think they're a great source of three. So you still have a little bit of time. Once the screen switches over to the uh, sort of um, calculating your answers, you still have a little bit of time. Sneak your answer in under the wire. See if you can get on the board. Everybody's guessing number one. Nobody's taking a guess at number three. Pretty obviously a great source of toenails on a pig's foot. Check out the video, it really freaked me out, um, but uh, I've gotten over it. Those are delicious. Um, all right, guys, whoa, it's a sweep, it's a full sweep. Way to go, way to go, 100% on that one. Everybody got the right answer. Pink feet are a great source of collagen, good for your hair, good for your skin. Not to mention, they're simply delicious. Let me know if you have ever tried pig's feet and what you think of them, or if you haven't, would you be brave enough to try them? I was freaked out, I tell you, I was freaked out. <laughs> especially, especially the shape. When I did that video, I realized you... Okay, go on. The key steps in processing dark tea. The key step in processing dark tea is... Is it one, piling? Two, yellowing? Three, kill green? Or four, shaking? Back to you. Oh, I just wanted to say how you... <laughs> before you eat the pig feet, because of Western diet, you kind of... Uh, 
habit of、uh, using the chopstick or or fork and knife to get exactly what you want. Well,、mm. my habit, our habit is to put the piece and spit out what we don't want. That's、right. the satisfying part. Right, right, and that is sort of a. There's a bit of a cultural barrier there for us too, because that's kind of considered rude to kind of remove things from your mouth. You try to avoid that kind of at all costs. Still, a few minutes to get your answer in for the key step in dark tea processing. Today's tea that we'll be talking about is it one piling, two yellowing, three kill green, or four shaking. Lolo said, "I travel to Africa a lot, and Africans love pig feet, mostly grilled, but I cannot eat them."、Oh. Mm. It could be interesting to try that. Grill is really good too. Way to go, everybody! Most of you got it. Piling, good guess though. Lolo with yellowing. That's how you do it. You take a guess. You put yourself out there. It's okay. It's not a big deal. Right or wrong, we're just here to have fun. Excellent work. And、uh, yeah, I would love to try African pig African pig's feet. Yu Guan Bai, the tea in my cup right now, is typically from this region. Is it one Yunnan, two Guangdong, three Fujian, or four Zhejiang? Those of you who were here early and saw the pre-roll had a little hint. <laughs> Now they're nervous. They're like, oh, I can't get it wrong. <laughs> where is Yu Guangbai typically from? The one we're drinking. Typically, I shouldn't say what, where the one we're drinking is from because it might sway the crowd. I don't want to sway the crowd. I might have mentioned it earlier. Pig's feet aren't are supposed to be good for making broth too. Mm. Mm. I suspect that would be true. We really love homemade broth. Really、mm. can't get anything like that. Thick, mommy, delicious. Yeah, I used to buy the chicken broth in the carton, and once I tried it、mm. by itself without anything,、mm. and I realized salt that water. That has nothing to do with、right. the, like the chicken broth. I'm gonna tell a story about broth too. Just you got a few minutes to get your answers in, get them in. But broth helped me understand the concept of thickness of tea. If you're just getting started with tea and you hear people refer to, oh, this one is so thick. This tea has a great thick mouthfeel.、Um, doing what you did, like try diff- real broth versus. Oh yo, we got a sweep, folks. Ooh, we got、one. another sweep. Where is my button for sweep? Here it is. Way to go, everybody! Yu Guang Bai is typically from Yunnan Province.、Um, Jinggu, Jinggu, Jinggu.、Mm-hmm. And you guys all got it right, and that is awesome. The three ways to brew green tea that are covered in our blog post: how to brew green tea, which I'll link down below. I think I forgot to. I meant to. Is it one Gai Wan teapot and grandpa style? Is it two tea bag, tea infuser, and loose leaf? Is it three Keurig, Nespresso, and Aeropress? It's pretty funny, right? I like that. Or is it four? Xia tou fa, zhong tou fa, and shang tou fa. All right. While you take your guess, I'm gonna get back to talking about what we were talking about a moment ago, <laughs> which I forget. I knew、hmm. it. I knew. No, no, no. I remember、uh, talking about thickness of tea liquor, and、um, when we when you started to make a lot of broth,、yes. and I taste those the noodles with real broth compared to noodles with、uh, those quick broth, you really start to realize what. Thickness. It's not like a viscosity thing. It's more of a mouth feel, the rich umami in the liquor kind of thing. So,、uh, if you're wondering what、mm. what, are, what are people talking about, try out try eating. Eating is a great way. Paying attention to what you're eating is a great way to kind of enhance your tasting skills. Three ways to brew green tea that are covered in our blog post. You got a few <laughs> seconds left. Everybody's guessing Gai Wan teapot and grandpa style. And I got you all, but I feel like I kind of made a mistake because we might have two green tea. Okay, I said clearly in how to brew green tea blog. So that is the video that covers Siatofa. So I got to give you guys this <laughs> sweep. Good guesses though, because those are number one is、gone. three common ways to brew green tea right, or any tea,、right. but it's not what's exactly covered in that video. So I have can't give it to you guys. Can't give it to you. All right, guys, here we go. Next week, sip along tea for Sunday tea book is. This is a simple matter of a paying attention question. <laughs> I forgot I wasn't supposed to say it.、Ah. Anyway, next week's sip along tea is. Is it Dian Hong? Actually, I said so many. It might have. It might confuse. Yeah, it confuse worked, the feel. <laughs> is it one Dian Hong black tea? Is it two Shui Xian Wu Yi Oolong? Is it three Yi Wu Gushu Shen Pu Er 2003? Or is it four 2015 Old Tree Shu Pu Er? Throw your guesses in. Throw your guesses in. 
See what's sorry, I got an itchy nose. I'm trying <laughs> desperately not to scratch my nose. It's really pollen in late, these mm. days. And so it's much really pollen windy. in the air. <laughs> Time signature says no fetal position in shower crying. <laughs> Tigers of the sea. Yes. I don't know, that's in my head now. Yeah, Big yeah, time. me too. Such a good song. We got some guesses for three, we got some guesses for one, all good guesses. It's a little bit of a tricky question because all of them are coming up, but only one of them mm. is next week. So I was a little bit tricky and way to go Simmerjeet and, uh, sorry, way to go Dominique, uh, Jubai and uh, Time Signature. You got Yiwu, Tian Home is the week after, but you know what? As we say all the time with uh, Tea Trivia Time, you guys are all winners in my book. You're all putting yourselves out there, taking guesses, having fun. And we are getting ready to dive in. Time signature, Jubai Jia, Dominique, all with four right answers. Wow. Way to go, guys. The leaderboard is crowded. And uh, Lolo with two, but you're all winners in my book. Sorry for the latecomers that didn't get included on the leaderboard. Simmerjeet, I saw you made some great, great uh, answers. Um, and I feel like somebody else is missing, but that's okay. You're all winners in my book. Uh, what a great time it is to be here with you at <laughs> I love Sunday, a goofy hour. Sunday um, Tea Book. Tea trivia is... Yeah, I hope you guys like how goofy it is. I keep it light. I keep it fluffy. There's a little bit of learning. There's some content in there. There's also a little bit of uh, goofiness and funness. I don't know. It's all about balance to me. I don't want mm -hmm. this to be super heavy and serious, especially... The paper we're reading is pretty, you yeah. know, heavy and serious, you know, six categories. But, um, you know, it's tea. We're drinking tea to have fun, to hang out with our friends. Maybe uh, because it's a, also because it's a healthy beverage, you know, it doesn't have to be heavy all the time. All right, one last little look at the, uh, yes, redemption. Just guess, yes. Good guesses, everybody. You guys are awesome. Totally fun. Now I will warm up to our um, tea classification and theory and practice. There is a link down below. I'm gonna pull it up on the screen every now and then. I'm not gonna keep it up on the screen the full time. I'm not gonna read every single section. We're gonna kind of summarize it, go through some of the little tricky pieces. If you wanna pull it up, I, I recommend it. Grab it up on your screen. Mm -hmm. uh, the link is down below to the uh, French agricultural website who has graciously uh, published this document. Thank heavens for them. Uh, link to the PDF is down below. We are on page 12 uh, in the PDF document, page 339 as it's written on the bottom for those of you who may wow. be printed it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, grab it. We're, and we're on uh, part three on page 339 slash page 12. So that will get you started. And we're talking about the classification of black tea as it's written in the book. But of course, he means dark, dark tea. Dark tea, yes. So to, in today's uh, session, uh, he dive into dark tea and uh, explain how he categorized different types of uh, dark teas based on its process. Mm -hmm. And the key step is piling. So the different, ty uh, different uh, types of uh, dark tea, according to him, are based on different timing of piling. Is mm -hmm. it done before drying? Is it done after pressing or stuff like those? Uh, that's the criteria is when the piling right. is done and uh, in general he summarized uh, three types with some uh, and giving us some uh, examples yeah right on and there were um I lost my notes okay. oh you don't have them I got them right here Adobe is really unreliable weird. like weird I usually pull yours up too so that was my bad like just... My notes were there, but my highlights are gone. Yes. It's okay though. I think I can't remember what I did. Here you are. Oh, thank you. That works. To the rescue. Mm. And this is the same file. Sometimes cell phones have the... Wow, you did a great job. Them. What? Just kind of winging it there. I was like, you're bang on. And then finally, no notes. Memory. Yeah. Right, so I'll give them a quick peek then at some of the uh, typical words that we change when we're <laughs> reading this document. Yeah. Um, so we mentioned, right, that in this, so here we are on page 12. 
So black tea is referring to uh, dark tea. Wherever you see it in the document, there's a few th like that. Mm -hmm. Also dark green, Jen corrected. I was kind of like wondering about it, but Jen corrected that. It's in Chinese, it's actually sort of a brown green or a, mm. a brownish green rather than dark green. Right, same with the later on you talk about the dark brown or, uh, or red. Like mm -hmm. uh, in general, all the dark tea has the tinge of a brown in it. Mm. Dark green brown, brown green or dark red or dark even to the black side when it's dry leaf. Yeah, it seems those Chinese mm -hmm. color words are a little bit tricky like they're because they're, yeah. they're pretty, especially green. I remember you told me there's so many words for green. Yeah, so some of the words are a little bit, um, you know, weird. And sometimes when the two words together, two color words together, it can mean a new word. It can mean right. only one of the characters meaning. So right. Anyway, right. in general, there's some brown tone when it comes to dark tea. Right. And the other one that's always, uh, this is can be just changed for flavonoids. Mm -hmm. But you'll see it in this document as yellow mm -hmm. alkane alcohol over right. and over. Anything else you want to talk about here? Uh, I Before think I the, zoom away. Uh, We're good here. Yeah. What else? Yeah. And mostly, I don't want to talk about uh, later on in the paragraph. We talk about the storage. By storage, right. you might be thinking of how we mm. store tea or stuff like that's. Uh, I think it's uh, not very uh, accurate in terms of a. It's not saying it's a wrong word, but. It could be misleading when people read the word uh, storage. Mm. It's just a way. So in Chinese, it's called. Can I have the Chinese, please? Oh sure. Let me bring it up. So it's called a uh, se. This is a tea term. So it's a uh, and also sometimes it's a. Uh, uh, translated as coloring or stuff that might make. Uh, like if you don't, uh, if people don't know the T word or the process or the T terms, you might think about, you know, food coloring and that kind of right. thing. But it's just a term. Of course, this process results in the color changes, but it doesn't. Uh, it's just saying the English word for people if don't know much might think about right. actual ways of color coloring right so that was yeah. this uh, color change reference right here yeah it's a it's a uh, nowadays a lot of times this step in english translated as a piling in chinese we can call that zuose, we can call that zuose. but the key thing is about this piling step mm, right, what right. is the key word and then he talks about two sort of styles right the uh the and we talked about this three earlier. styles sorry three wet uh, dry and maturing. Yeah, yeah so uh, the storage here is not actually stored that away for right. how we're aging. If you were thinking about this store with aging, uh, then uh, that's exactly what I mean. This word could be a little bit uh, misleading. Confusing, so it's right? just uh, how it was done. And again, what that, uh, there's n not necessarily a huge container or something. It's yes. piling, I think, is more yeah. close to what's yeah, like really happened. The note I put was that this is just to describe a step that takes time in terms of days, weeks, or months, but mm -hmm. you know, not something you're doing for a few hours or a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So I think that's how they ended up with storage. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, mm. Um, so three types, right? Uh, one is wet, one is uh, dry, and uh, one is uh, maturing of mm. the finished tea. Another interesting term. I initially thought that meant aging, like, oh, that is a way that, uh, you know, in dark tea we do that. Right, right. but uh, it's not, it's not aging. Mm. Aging tea is a very new concept. It didn't happen till uh, late 1890s. It started to emerge and it just emerged. It wasn't popular or anything at all. So at that time, there's nobody who is trying to age tea. So in terms right. of ma maturing, it's just that tea take a long time. Yeah. For example, later on, we're we'll talking about, say, Qianliang Cha, the traditional process take a year almost to dry and stuff, that kind of maturing. Right. Uh, think about uh, some like wines that they don't even mm. sell. They put that away. Or but whiskey. A, well, yeah. Right. 
uh, kind of things. Certain ones are for aging, but certain ones are because they're not ready. They just need mm -hmm. that time to finish yep. being a Y kind of thing. That's right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That, so that one really threw me off when we were having our discussion. I was thinking aging, but as you pointed out, right, not a thing. Mm -hmm. So. And uh, I w when you told me about the Tianliang Cha, I was like, how could it take so long to dry? But then you reminded me, right? Those things are pressed, super compressed, right? And they still have a bit of humidity in them, so they need a lot of time to... And uh, super big. And they're, Traditionally, and they're, they're thick, super right? big and in a really humid environment. In right. Hunan, it's very humid. Nothing and, like uh, Ottawa. Yeah, and you put that outside just with some shell. So in that processing is mm -hmm. also it's drying, but in the process there's still raining days. It even gets wetter with stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's not a straight up drying. But what it means is more of a natural drying, which we'll talk right. about a little bit more in later paragraph. Right then it dives into. Uh, Oh, this is an interesting part. So explain, now he starts to give some examples of those teas that he uh, categorizes. First one, uh, <laughs> what? No, that this was super interesting for me because by and large, I didn't recognize neither the translated name nor the opinion name. I was like, felt sort of like I didn't know a thing. Yeah, the, but you recognize like Tianjian, Gongjian. Tianjian was, uh, was literally the one that jumped out at me as, oh, finally. Right, but uh, yeah, it's a a traditional name of those teas, and once upon a time was a pause to make that more clear. So it's a called uh, 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 Xiangjian Yi Hao Er Hao mm. by Yi Hao Er Hao. Number one, number two, it kind of gave it a little grade, and uh, the I found the translation here is a little bit. Uh, zigzag in English. Yeah. I don't know if you guys when you read that uh, was that pretty straight, but I we made that into a, a flow chart right. so that uh, you can see the process of it rather than I found a reading like a that a first one two sentence is kind like, of down here is what we're no. talking. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Right. Yeah, up there. Right. So that kind of got my eyes crossed. So we kind of distilled it down to uh, pan-fired, rolling, and piling, which uh -huh. is uh, the sort of abbreviation for, not abbreviation, but all together, that's this what he refers to as this, wet that. That's yeah, quote unquote uh, wet that. This summarizes the, mm. um, <laughs> the whole sentence. So it's basically the process is pan-fried and rolling and piling. You can see the piling comes before drying. That's when he uh, calls this a wet vat. And afterwards, there is a drying. That's what you call mao cha in the dark tea. And I, uh, I think I read mm. somewhere in a book that they were talking about a hei mao cha, uh, translated as a dark or black cat tea. There's mm. no cat tea. It was a misspelling in Chinese. Right. Because M-A-O have different tones and uh, cat and uh, <laughs> mao, mao cha are the same uh, spelling. So if you ever come across a dark cat tea, uh, that means mao cha, not mm. mao cha. Which, which in the document they call straight tea, which I found super confusing because yeah. that's often used to refer to unblended, unscented teas now mm. in our, in our um, daily language. Mm. We say straight tea means pure tea, but this version of straight tea, it's, you can just sub it out with mao cha. Mm. So after it's dried, uh, become mao cha, then mao cha goes through a sifting, quick sifting process to have, give different grade, like a tender materials mm -hmm. or smaller materials, higher grade, more stand, lower grade. Then finish it uh, separately. Finish up with some steam and uh, press mm -hmm. into its own shape. Yeah, so, which is all kind of in here. That's the kind of the process of uh, Tianjian. If you ever tried Tianjian, right? So which we strongly it. recommend. Mm, it's a really nice tea, and uh, that's why he gave this example of this and uh, I think mm. he called that uh, Xiangjian number one and Xiangjian number two. That's mm. the t that's in the name of that time yeah. for this tea. So Tianjian is a grade, Gongjian is another grade. Mm. 
We've got three great Tianjian on our website too. I don't mm. want to be overly pluggy, but it is really interesting to taste the difference. We have Tianjian, we have an aged Tianjian mm. and an aged premium Tianjian, mm. which I'm going to guess would fall more into the Gongjian category, but I'm not sure. So the Tianjian and Gongjian usually, again, with those terms and nowadays you really don't know so what they mean. So you can this, always yeah. ask uh, the vendor where you get mm. the tea. Uh, but for us, we don't have a Gongjian because mm. we didn't uh, go with a super uh, tender material ah. as a dark tea. For me, it loses certain things. Right. The pre our premium one, why is the premium? Is uh, because the uh, Tawar, it comes from the ancient uh, royal tea garden right. where it has the right. really pristine Tawar for dark tea. And you can, if you get them side by side and taste them, they actually have, it's more of a depth difference, mouthfeel mm. difference. It's not right. like a flavor, this one is smoky, this one is sweet. It's more of the depth. Right. for tasting right on that makes sense there was one other little thing the hua juan right was translated as a scented roll tea but mm. that, that was just kind of a oops it, yeah it it's an old name for uh it's also sometimes when we talk about tian liang cha a lot mm. that kind of a graze and fu zhuan those are old times those are pressed into big logs so we call that hua jiu. um you know right. it's actually a kind of a mantle as well <laughs> a kind of bowser like yeah, manual there is a mm. curl it means the curl. A flower here doesn't mean flower sanded the flower means mm. the uneven uh, color the the uh, the kind of a uh, different depth of like a flower uh, dress right you can imagine it's a pattern oh like, like di my uneven right. dark light dark light right, we right. call that hua as well ah, in chinese okay that's why it's called hua zhu implies the look of the dry leaf all right and now oftentimes it's called uh hei zhuan or uh hua zhuan cha mm, i want to pop over i saw lots of uh lots okay. of comments i think we might have some some questions here think we need to hear Phil's Hei Cha song. Hey, oh, that's a great idea. I don't know why I Who didn't said that? That's time signature. And we should have had it ready for today, but I don't have it ready, so it's not going to happen, and I'm certainly not going to do it live. <laughs> ah, Paul McCartney is a hard act to follow. So, um, But for those of you who haven't, uh, who don't know what the heck we're talking about, there is a, I will put a link down below to uh, our, I believe that's our How to Brew Hei Cha video, which has a, we use how to a brew friend, Fujuan. Fujuan, for example, mm. and uh, we also show how to boil it. If you are into boiling dark tea and not sure how to do it, that video gave great instruction. Yes. Um, you can always brew then boil, but that in that video I started with straight boil, straight boil yeah. and how to do it. So, and that's a great segue into, so I'm going to put the link down below. It's not there yet, but I'll just mention also that if you are uh, tuning in late, Mac McMillan, hello, not to point, not to single you out, but just to say hello. Um, <laughs> and you want to catch up on the beginning of the episode, or if you're just tuning in after, uh, or if you're, anyway, the episode is going to disappear for a couple days. It will be back Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, give us some time. And at that point in the links down below, you will find the Hey Cha, the link to the How to Brew Fujuan, which features uh, a song called Hey Cha to the tune of Hey Jude. Get it? Hey Cha, Hey Jude. Da -da 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 -da. All Get right. <laughs> so, um, yes, so that's a great idea. Time Signature, thanks for that. And Time Signature asks a question. The fermentation takes place during the piling process, right? Uh, I think mostly right, but not mm -hmm. exclusively right, yeah. but, but by and large. Mm -hmm. And Jubaijia says, are you talking about, uh, and I can't read it, so maybe you could jump in right there. Menhua, mm. to smother or cover the tea? Mm. Uh, yes and uh, no, mostly no, sorry. <laughs> I'm just uh, thinking. So first, uh, Menhua, um, Menhua is a, uh, a door and with a heart inside so the, the the Chinese character is slightly wrong sorry that's why I was like not sure but I know what you're saying I understand what you're saying and that's the term like uh, we call that a fa hua or meng hua usually refers very 
quite specifically nowadays talking about Fu Zhuan has that process. Well, that mm. one talking about gold flower and more. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't right. really often use to other dark tea. Right. Let me know if I get what you're. But asking. that brings up another thing. When you mentioned the nowadays, it reminded me when we were going over this. You really realize with the dark tea, especially with the amount of, when he's talking about the, um, what was it, wet vat, dry vat, and maturing. Mm -hmm. And you see a lot of teas, like nowadays, the dark teas, tea is a living thing, right? So the processes are changing, innovations are being made, and especially vis-a-vis -vis the maturing process, we see some teas like, you know, Liu Bao Cha, which used to be, I think, five years of maturing, and then it would come out. Kind of people want to get that out, and that's so we can sell it, right? Which totally makes sense. So processes are changing, and uh, hey, Jiu Jia, uh, not too oh, bad. Oh, not too bad. Pretty it's, great. Uh, yeah. It's uh, really easy to get right? them uh, like uh, mixed up. Mm -hmm. So, um, shall I go back to the... Yeah, going to swing on back there. Mm -hmm. And I think we're... Are you in here now? Mm, a little bit of... We just uh, talk about the process. So basically right. that process is mostly talking about uh, uh, Tianjian. Then, uh, this style of uh, Hunan Hei Cha, they are kind of similar. So after the steam, some are pressed then to dry like the other ones. Like uh, ah, here. for Fu Zhuan, there is that it's uh, pressed first. It has to press first, then go for the uh, uh, Meng Hua, Fa Hua process. Mm -hmm. That's more. So there is a slight difference, uh, like uh, he was mentioning, in terms of uh, well, uh, where piling happens, there are different types of dark teas. Right. Yeah. Subcategories. So he does get into a little bit of the, uh, as you, we saw in previous, uh, when we talked previously about green teas and mm -hmm. about, uh, um, I'm a little bit stuck, green tea and yellow tea. Yellow tea. We talked a little bit about the subcategories and what would make them. So now we're getting, he gets into a little bit of what are the subcategories here for dark tea. Yeah. Then talk about some other types of dark tea, like Qingzhuan, Lao Qingcha, Hubei Lao Qingcha, a very uh, traditional uh, old blue tea. Lao Qingcha, a very traditional um, dark tea. Mm. So that one, so the example here are mostly like, teas that pressed into different shapes and let the time do the drying work right as a different type maturing styles yes a different type of dark tea so um yeah, there's a big a uh, heptagon tap hot oh, you go ahead <laughs> big heptagon biscuit tea of yunnan that's is a, mm -hmm. I was so excited when I saw this big heptagon. I thought, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. there's a press tea I haven't yet seen that has seven sides. No, I was wrong. So I was so excited. Though. It refers to what we nowadays call a tea cake. Yunnan Qi Zi Cha. I think what gave him the idea of a heptagon is because of the seven uh, in, Whoops. in uh, poor. Right, the tom, so, right? Yeah, it tom. So in poor TK, traditionally, it comes in five, uh, three, five, seven gram a cake, which, why that's... A 357 gram cake. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Because, no, it's okay, because we're about to talk about grouped in seven cakes. Right. So it's a bit... So 357 grams. So why that's so weird a mm. number? Because it's an old uh, weight unit. Mm. And all together, seven of them is another weight unit. In right. tea term, we call that itong. Uh, so itong, seven pieces of the tea cake. Mm. That's why we often call that the qi zi cha bi. So, uh, yes. Here. So, so don't get your heart set on seeing a seven-sided heptagonal press There's no tea. fancy press like that. Right? That's what I was thinking. Wow, that's some serious angle mm. work. Yeah. No. And then the heart-shaped fern tea is a sing sing heart-shaped, where you sometimes see as a mushroom shape with a handle, and jin uh, cha also pressed the tea. Um, mm -hmm. That one is usually export to Xi uh, 
Tibet. They even special developed the shape with a heart, uh, with a handle for Tibet for better drying. Right. Uh, not very popular, not often seen nowadays. Right. It's a special historical tea. Was the handle so they could hang it? No, to oh, okay. dry, to okay. better dry. Okay. Just... Otherwise, the tea, uh, they had the issue of getting moldy because the road is really, you know, really humid. Right. So they put the handle, which puts between the teas, there's more space, so oh, the tea dries proper. Right, give a bit of air space. Mm. And uh, not bowls are pressed into brick shape, only the hard ones, the, the tea, like uh, the cake shape, still right. is uh, in production. Hard shape is uh, less, less seen now. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'm really enjoying this uh, white tea. I put enough. I think I, I wasn't sure you I put, put a good leaf. amount. I put a. Uh, it's, it's, like... it's not as much as uh, sometimes we go really boss with our leaf amount. I only put about five grams, and we've got a pretty big guy one. We're... So white tea, five gram. I think it's a it's good one boss, for yeah. two. White tea is those kind of. Uh, it's never as uh, strong and pungent like a oolong, but it just. Uh, you know, slow, slow release. stream, mm. but flows yeah. for a long time kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, we must be on like four or five here. Oh, no, no, no. no? Way four? past that. Way, Way past, past four or five. That. I'm at four or five when we're doing like a tea trivia. Mm. <laughs> but it's still got a nice thick mouthfeel. It still has that sweetness. Mm. Yeah. Really good. Oh, somebody, Chubai Jia knows hexagon. It's a Xi Jiao Sing. Someday we should put out a hexagonal shaped Bing. <laughs> Call it the, uh, that could be the tigers of the T Bing. Mm. Mm. No particular reason for that comment. <laughs> Except I really. No particular reason. I really want to see a, hexa, a heptagonal T. Right. And. Um... And just to finish off of that uh, paragraph, then, then you mentioned Liu Bao Cha, which is pressed into a big basket. You really don't see those things a lot. So, right. uh, like Phil mentioned uh, just now that uh, when we were doing this uh, reading together, it really reminds us how much mm. the tea process has changed. It might not be significant as the tea taste is absolutely different or anything. There's right. like, a lot of changes in tea production. In China, we talk about the how Liu Bao Cha. You can mm -hmm. find almost three types of Liu Bao Cha. They're all different. They're all under the name Liu Bao Cha. Uh, so if you're interested in that, you can check that out. But here, like a, traditionally, a Liu Bao Cha doesn't go to the market after five years aged in the big right. basket. Right. Right. Same with uh, like a Qian Liao Cha I mentioned. Also take a year to age but now because the market is more like oh i have 2021 early teas like and that kind of a mm. green tea because of how popular and well yes. known it is that any trend come uh in green tea overflow to almost All every the tea, tea type right? right a dark tea we're gonna use in butts we're gonna use those right. things so it really the market is changed a lot compared to when this uh, paper published when when mr uh chen Chuan is talking about dark tea is still very quite traditional dark tea process mm -hmm. pressing and stuff and it's not like oh we press it so the tea can ferment it can age well can add it no because the material they use if you don't press it's really bulky if we right. can stuff that in one bag why do we need to leave that to five bags so right. There's really always bulky. a little bit yeah. pressing for that for convenience. Yeah. So a lot of tea stuff. and uh, economic efficiency, right? Yeah. They need to you know get that to market, and yes. we don't. We only have three donkeys. We don't have twelve. Yeah. So uh, just want to remind you at that time there's no concept of aging tea mm. and stuff. And uh, uh, I think I did a talk. I did some talk before about uh, age poor and take poor how to tell you know real and fake and stuff i always start with the question to the audience is how many of you have 
flowers from 2000 or 1999. Nobody would raise their hand. Or when I asked them, anybody have over 20 kg of uh, bread at home? Nobody would raise their hand. <laughs> so just want to give everybody a context, concept. Right? Yes. Get the context. It's what set. we're familiar with nowadays, talking about aging teas and stocking up and storage and stuff. Back mm. in the time when, you know, early times, there's no such concept. It's a daily necessity. Just bread is a yes. great metaphor, right? It was a daily necessity. <laughs> why would you store it up and put it in the That's closet for five years? That's why I want people years? to realize the chance of how much we can just you know, go to a store and buy some 90s, 60s, 90s, 70s, mm. uh, age poor, this and that is uh, extremely rare, mm. extremely rare. Anyways, uh, I don't want to talk too much about that, but I did put a little um, poll on Instagram, which if I myself can okay, behave properly. I wanted to see what people think in terms Live of... Live results coming oh, at you here. <laughs> suddenly changed. I was the last time I checked, I was asking like, what do you think about uh, uh, poor? Uh, should I be dark tea or other tea type? Last oh, time I checked was uh, uh, zero Shen for Pua dark tea. specific, right? Yeah. Did I mention Shen Pua? Okay, oh, poor. But, but I meant Shen Pua. I, I didn't put that. My bad. Still, they have Anyway, they went with it was other, like a five for other tea type and zero for dark tea. Now the wow. result is a four for dark tea and a six for others. I'm a little surprised, but yeah, what? I I don't know because at first you didn't say shampoo, which is sort of the more uh. the more baiting question. But still, six people feel like puar should be an other. Mm. I don't know. Anyways, they gotta join Sunday Tea Book. <laughs> Anyways, so in the uh, Sunday Tea Book previous episodes, we talk about uh, uh, Puar is a uh, uh, shai qing sun dried green tea and stuff. Mm. And uh, again, that's like an episode uh, 1.0, okay? <laughs> Puar Shenpuar 1.0. And here, imagine about uh, Puar got pressed and stuff. Uh, again, this is just... Uh, according to his system, how he puts it, and what uh, some people choose, what to agree with, what to not agree with, um, and explain why we put poor in dark tea, and I still think it's a dark tea, mm. uh, and it's not that special. Like a lot of people say poor is special because it's cultivar, because it's this, that, 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 but a lot of them doesn't fit the... Right. The, a lot of arguments are limited, is what I'm saying. Anyway, right. so just want to mention, like here, it mentioned about how the pressed the poor have that natural uh, drying process. So talking about poor, nowadays we can have 2021 poor, shen poor. Mm -hmm. right here, mm -hmm. today I talk about shen poor, okay? Uh, so just to simplify when right. I say poor. Um, it's very normal. And uh, from China to North America to Europe, that's within days with shipping. Right. All times, because of how hard it is to get the thing out of uh, Yunnan, just from within China, from Yunnan to Beijing as royalty, we're talking about autumn or even later mm -hmm. or winter. Actually, it's more so of So from spring winter. until autumn, winter. Yes, that's when the farmers are not busy. They can do the shipping. Yeah. Right. So I that's also want the time. The, okay. I just want to. This took me a long time. There's a, a there's a whole bunch of interesting stories about transit time of tea being really long. And mm. I have to admit, until I was in China, and put myself in the mindset of a hundred years ago, or even fifty or sixty years ago, mm. where the infrastructure wasn't as developed, the the landscape, the topology, is so demanding. Even even in uh, Chaoren 2019, we talk about Siping and how isolated Taeguanyin was. Yes. And not, it's yes. not even Yunnan. Yunnan is even further, mm. just as mountainous, with several ver several layers of mountains between there and Beijing. Like it's, mm -hmm. it, so it's it's a little hard for me to imagine how long it took. Yeah. But it's just the landscape really mm. affects, and it's hard, really right? Affect. So there's major huge rivers that you need to ziplock, ziplock, no, zip. 
what was the saying? Zip, oh, zip line. Zip lining. Oh, it was so right? cool. <laughs> People and horses and everything. Horses and donkeys <laughs> on a zip line, okay? <laughs> Check it out. Look for it on YouTube. Yes. Sometimes they fall in. Yeah, but they, they know how to swim. Though. And they, they rescue them because they don't want them to lose them, right? They're, uh, first, they're valuable, and yeah. second, everything on their back is valuable. Yeah. Poor little horses. No, it's a loss. Sometimes. I saw them rescue one of one of the YouTube yeah, I mean, the, the products are always lost because oh. how heavy it is right. It's, uh, right away. Anyway, it doesn't matter. What I'm trying to say is the uh, circumstances has changed. It's, uh, it's, um, mm. Mm, it's not uh, something really has to be right or wrong. It's just uh, right. I'm in this angle. I take this as this. Uh, as dark tea, where you are in that angle, you take this as a green tea or whatever tea. Um, but in a traditional, like a more classic way to think about it, the rarely part is consumed in a very timely fashion. And the environment, mm. as in Yunnan, where a lot of the parts of China is warm and humid in the long process. And imagine old times, it's not very well sealed and it rains on the people mm. on the mm. tea in transit is normal right even though they try to give that a cover but right. talk about your barnyard flavor happen. yeah things still happen so those are slow uh slow process just like uh, uh again just like a liang cha in my it's out in the open yard dry so during the process even though they have covers there are rainy days there are mm -hmm. wet days not to mention how humid it is typically there like so I... it's a natural slow processing mm -hmm. so because a lot of people are saying uh sh uh Shimpur Pur doesn't have that piling as dark teas or stuff it's just uh, old times this kind of piling happens in the natural way right. which again besides for there are other teas Lao Tingzhuan also have that mm. as well. So other teas also go through uh, this kind of a It's like that mat maturation. Yeah, so mm. uh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, first, it's an interesting thing to talk about. The second, it's not very controversial to tea people like uh, uh, in China. Right. 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 <laughs> Mostly right. more of tea, uh, even in China, it's more merchant or people trying to sell that to make that very special and that's why when this kind of a categorizing system come out to people in general i mean again tea industry people in general still agrees with this uh, way of categorizing because mm. it's a pretty thorough and touches on every aspect yeah, very including methodical very thorough poor so it's mm. uh, for marketing reason i personally understand you have to say the product is, is unique but in the more of knowledge side i uh, tend to agree right. that it is a darty shen or shu right but maybe years later i might change my mind who knows right <laughs> so basically because of that pressing step and that um that sort of maturation step that even shen puar has um, that's sort of the reasoning there. It reminds me of that black tea that we had that, f uh, it was a dark tea, dark tea, but it was a black, a Fujuan black. Yeah. Remember that? Yes, yes. So again, I was, when we first got that, I was really confused, right? Because I'm like, what do you mean black Fujuan? Is this a dark tea or is this a black tea? And I think if I can you if I have this straight because it was pressed and has that longer maturation at the end, the Fu Zhuan process. Mm. Uh, we mentioned it. What was Menhua or the other Hua? Uh, uh, fa Hua. Fa Hua. Fa Hua. Yeah. It has that Fa Hua. So then it's a dark tea as well. So it's kind of similar, right? Am I off base? Yes. There? I'm yes. Kind of like if you ask me, like uh, was a Shen Fu is more like a sun dried a green tea goes through the dark tea process and it's mm. a final flavor is closer to dark tea mm, mm. and same with the one actually if you uh, I don't know if you right. can check out our video on the black tea went through the Fujuan process uh, the Fujuan Fanghua the gold flower process and uh, become a dark tea it, it's changed its tasting profile I'll link to that as well guys mm. I'll put the link down in one, in a couple yes. days when we have the finished video and if you're interested up. to try that it is our upcoming uh, uh, new tea so right on so make sure you subscribe to our newsletter if you're checking out <laughs> yeah. Cha Ren or down in the footer of the website you mm -hmm. can sign up to the newsletter so you'll know when the new teas come out you can make sure you grab those that'll be a fun one 
Yeah, it's a really good one. Uh, like I, I remember my. If you ask me, the key thing about that tea is that reminds me how Liu Bao Cha used to taste like. Right, right. Yeah. All right. So, um, guys, I think we're wrapping up. I think let's check out the comments here. I think somebody was asking about the liquor color. Have you shown the color of the white tea infusion? Mm. I think once had a kind of overdose with white tea, so I started to brew less strong, like five gram and one eighty mil. One eighty mil, yeah. Yeah, that's about what we're at right now. Um, Usually, I try to shoot for a golden, light golden to the light side. Mm. Oh, let me bring it over. This here, is, so. um, yeah, to the later infusions. This yes. is the, I would push that a little bit further as the the the, the uh, flavor, the taste goes lighter. But a little more time, basically. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you will see this. In the first few infusions, I didn't see it's a shade or two lighter than this. I think this might be better. Mm, nice, nice. Because the uh, bamboo is slightly yellow. So you gotta <laughs> manually tune down a few shades for mm. the more accurate color. Yeah, and Lolo uh, also commented about the transfer transport of the tea, I think, mm. that they had to bring it all the way from Yunnan up to the Himalaya, right, mm. to Tibet and stuff. Mm -hmm. And Jubajia has seen school kids and donkeys on YouTube ziplining there. I know yes. it's absolutely incredible. Yes, and uh, if you they look never, at that... They never drop the school kids as far as I know, so it's just, <laughs> just the donkeys. It's different, guys. like uh, mm. the scale of the river mm. is, uh, they usually don't need to cross that kind of fierce river. For the tea transform, there's the huge river like Yalu Zhang Bujiang. The, the highest canyon, that river, goes um, creating the highest canyon in the world. I don't know it. Mm, I don't know the English, that. okay? Yalu Zhang Bujiang, yeah. Oh, uh, we have a, a U, YouTube video on Tibet mm. when I was there, so I think I put that some information over there. Mm. Uh, th that's a fierce river in certain areas and um, like for fierce. Travel travelers, tea travelers, they have to zip lining through that. Uh, yeah, it's a really magnificent, unbelievable landscape in the Yunnan, <gasps> Tibet area. Yeah, mm. Mac McMillan asks, when will you go to China again? And wow, that's a yeah. great question. We are so, so year. excited. Yeah, yeah, I think. You, I don't know. I just, uh, I'm just waiting for the whole vaccine things to Smooth settle out, open up. and uh, have the final notice of if you're vaccinated, you don't have to quarantine. Because, uh, mm. yeah, I don't know in your country, uh, how long do you need to quarantine when you go? But in China, you uh, our model is a 14 plus number N. Depends on where you are than the local. For example, uh, you go to Beijing, I think it's 28 days, 14 days mandatory in hotel plus 14 days at home. Some places are seven days, but at least there's 21 days of quarantine. Yeah, it's now really punishing. To go back, yeah. But in Canada, we that's have basically three days. my whole trip. So that's pretty nice. Yeah. So um, anyway, the answer to your question, Mac McMillan, is hopefully soon. Um, but we have we don't have any plans yet. But uh, really hopeful, really mm -hmm. excited. I'm really excited to get back in the T Mountains, and um, yeah, we'll have to see if we, if we can pick up. Who knows? It's 2021 now. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Stay tuned. Um, sign up to our newsletter so you'll know if we have a tea trip. And um, Time Signature says, better to be careful. Yes, agree. We're 100% on that page. So guys, that is wrapping up Sunday Tea Book Dark Tea. Tune in next week. We are going to continue on with, I don't even know, so I'll go back to the book and we'll just have Ooh. a peek. White tea. That's a nice one. Classification of white tea. So tune in next week. We'll be... Oh, one more thing. Sorry. Semi-important. Talking about fermentation. Sorry. Mm. Just one more. Fermentation, uh, dark tea, make people feel like it's a heavy fermentation. Same with the oxidation and roasting. The mm. range is from 1%, almost like 0.1% to 99%, right? There's a range. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of dark teas are not, once you brew, not as dark as people think. Or sometimes because we're more familiar with poor, we think dark right. teas are Shoe poor especially, yeah. right? Most of dark teas are more close to shen poor. Right. You know, the in terms of fermentation like and that kind mm. of range is 
it's a range. It's really a range. It's not oh, heavy. coming back to the shampoar is a, as a dark tea. Yeah, or other tea. Just I feel mm. like sometimes because we use a dark tea, we talk about fermentation. Right. And it's a black or leaf looks black, and people are expecting something like almost uh, as uh, like expecting something like shampoar. Well, a right. lot of dark teas we know are closer to the shampoar. Right, right. Just to say this uh, fermentation is a range, just like roasting and oxidation. That's all. Right. Okay. Perfect. So we squeezed that in. Good thing we got that out. <laughs> no, and Ju Bai Jie is actually uh, hoping to hit Jing Dejun and Zhe Jiang in 2022 if he can get uh, past the quarantines too. Same, yeah, right. same thing we're, <laughs> we're monitoring closely to see what's going on there. I will remind you next week, as we noticed, white tea is uh, on the menu for what we're going to be talking about. Um, as, I as I mentioned earlier, uh, if you want to go on to our website and brew along with us, we'll be brewing Yi Wu Gushu Shampoo 2003. Then the week after that, Dian Hong, uh, when we cover uh, black tea, that'll be a uh, Hong Cha for that week. Shui Xian is coming the week after. That's going to be when we cover, I think, uh, Oolong. I think we're getting close to all six categories at that point. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we've got an old tree, 2015 old tree, Shupuar, and a Baimudan top grade. They're all in our upcoming videos. You can check the headers for that. Mm -hmm. But I just told you, maybe I'll throw the link down below to all of them as well. But uh, it would be super fun to brew along with you guys. So check those out. And, yeah. um, and we just implement a new checkout system for if you are in uh, Canada oh, or the one. United States. Yeah. So we have uh, four interest uh, free payment plans. Uh, just choose the option of checkout yeah. so that you can enjoy the tea now and pay later. Yeah, isn't that awesome? So that is available in Canada and the US. And um, I don't know, I might say something about international shipping. What do you think? Can I do that? Yeah, I'm going to say it. If you're an international person and you're like, oh, the shipping, um, go ahead and have a look, see what it looks like. And if it's a little crazy, hit us with an email and let us know. Maybe we can. Uh, we're looking at some other shipping options. So I'll take, I'll take the responsibility and look into that and maybe hook something up for those of you who are international. Thank you everyone for joining us from all over the world. It is so good to hang out with you guys and chat about tea, sip tea together, and just basically hang out together. Um, really looking forward to seeing you guys next week. And until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping. Keep steeping.